Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video I'll be using my brand new bowl mould from Let's Resin along with Aquacast Eco Resin to create a beautiful stone effect bowl. I really love the results and if you're interested to see how it turns out stay tuned and enjoy the video. <laughs> For today's project I'm using Aquacast which is my favourite casting compound now. I really do love it. And what you need to do is fill your mould with water and weigh it at the same time so you know how many grams of water your mould will hold. And then go to the Elichem website and they've got a calculator on there and you just put that number in and it tells you exactly how much water and how much powder you will need. So I took those measurements and weighed them out. First I did the water, then I did the clear button on my weighing scales and added the powder to the water. Always do the water first when you're using Aquacast, it works a lot better. I've got a little scoop that I use for adding my powder and it makes it a lot more accurate and also theoretically a lot less messy as well but I always manage to make a mess. <laughs> However hard I try I make a mess and get it everywhere. I should have had it closer to the jug but anyway it doesn't matter. I've got my protective mat down on the table and then I just gave it a really good stir. I do find that Aquacast mixes very, very easily. And I think it's because you're mixing it with water instead of the, you know, the acrylic binder that you would get in Hydroflow or Jesmonite. And yeah, it's the same. This is just the same as Hydroflow or Jesmonite. But the stuff that you get in the acrylic binder has been fused into the powder. So you just need to mix it with water instead of, you know, buying a liquid and the water um, powder. You're just buying a powder. So it's great and it mixes so much better, really, really easily. Anyway, once I'd mixed it up, I divided it into three. Oh, and before I did that, sorry, I'm forgetting myself. <laughs> what you've just seen me do there was I added a little bit of extra water because I wanted my solution to be a little bit thinner, more fluid for the project I'm doing today. And that is one of the things I really love about Aquacast is the fact that you can just add a little bit more water. It will prolong the curing time and the finished result won't be quite as strong as it would be with the you know required the measurement that comes out in the calculator if you go by the exact ratio yeah it won't be as strong as that but it's still fine it still has the same properties it will take the color just as well so it's really really good for that reason anyway i'm waffling now <laughs> I've now separated it into three um, different containers and one of them I'm just going to have with white, the other will be grey and the other will be black. You can leave the white just as it is or you can use some jesmonite pigment like what I've got here just to crispen it up a bit. It, it just makes it a little bit of a brighter white but like I said it's not really necessary. And next I used black jesmonite pigment for the black one and you don't need much. Just a little bit goes a long way with the black. And then once I'd mixed that up I poured a little bit of that into the third cup just a bit at a time to make a grey and then I had my three colours nice and easy. The mould I am using for my bowl is from Let's Resin and I really love it. I've only just got it. If you saw my unboxing video the other day you'll have seen me get this one out of there and oh my goodness I was so pleased when I got it and I couldn't wait so this is the first thing Oh, as well as that white silicon cup you see me using. They sent me that as well. That's a really nice big silicon cup. Anyway, <laughs> that's the mould I'm using today. The volume of that is 300 milliliters, no, 300 grams it was of water. You know, if you're using the calculator. 
Anyway, so I'm pouring them in in like a puddle pour, each colour in the middle of the last colour alternately and I'm also sprinkling on some silver metallic powder, pigment powder from Resin Pro in my little shaker bottle that I had and just sprinkling it on just to add a little bit of glitz into there and then I just carry on pouring in the aqua cast. Right, so now you'll see the reason why I added that extra bit of water to thin it down a bit. I wanted it to flow a lot more easily. I didn't want it too thick. And also, I wanted it to run down the central part of the mould without touching the outer part of the mould. I wanted it to fill up from the bottom, if you if you can imagine what I mean, I wanted it to fill up from the bottom without touching the outer sides and just to stick to the inside first and then just fill up from the bottom. I hope you can understand what I mean by that. It's really hard to explain some things. <laughs> Before it was completely full, I started to give it a really good tap on the sides and also you can bang on the table and that just dislodges any little air pockets that might have been trapped or any bubbles that might have been trapped. Aquacast is actually really good for giving you a completely smooth finish without bubbles on the surface and you'll see that at the end. But it does help if you can give the, the sides a really good tap, especially where the mould comes up to that curve. Any air bubbles will get trapped there where they can't get out in that curved bit. So pay a lot of attention to that area. But what I also did was I brought it up to the edge of the table. So it was just sticking out at the edge of my table and I squeezed it around the rim and kept just turning it around and squeezing all the way around because if you've got any experience of doing this kind of thing you'll know that when you demold it if there's any air bubbles they will be right at the rim it's just the area where they like to get trapped so that's why I squeezed all the way around after that it was just a case of filling it up with my last little bits of aquacast and yeah the thing with I'm um, using that calculator that I spoke about right at the beginning is it tells you the exact amount that you will need. It would probably be best to make a little bit extra because you end up really scraping out all your containers to make sure you get every last drop. So, yeah, I had exactly the right amount. And once it was all in, I banged the table and it just levels it all out. And, you know, any last remaining bubbles will come out at that stage. And then it's just a case of leaving it. I left it for two hours to cure because I'd put that extra water in. I wanted to make sure it was completely cured before demolding it. So as if by magic, two hours has passed and it's time to get it out. Let's have a look. It's best to take the mould off at one piece. Fat. Don't try to get it unravelled all the way around because it's really hard. Just bring up one bit at a time and it, then it all starts to come up. Anyway, here it is. It's out. And apart from that little white spot in the middle, <laughs> I was really super, super pleased with it. It reminds me of um, Denby Stoneware. I don't know if you're... a if you know Denby very well, depends which country you're in, I suppose. But Denby makes stoneware and I love the natural patterns you get in it. And I've been trying to get that pattern for a long time. And this is the closest I've ever got to it. So I was really, really pleased. And the silver is subtle, but it's there in places. And do you see the shine as well? It's really shiny from that mould. So... Yeah, I was really happy with how, how it turned out. And I did need to do some sanding at the bottom. I'd gone a little bit close to the top of the mould where I think because it had been in the package for a while, uh, it was a little bit wibbly wobbly. It had lost its shape around the edge of the mould. And I, I went a bit too close to that and so bottom of the bowl in places has got that wibbly wobbly <laughs> line thing anyway I just used my big nail file and sanded it down and after that 
I left it until the next day and then I sealed it with beeswax. And the wax I'm using is Clark's wax for stone and concrete and it works really well for the Aquacast. It's also food grade because it's 100% natural. So it's great if you're going to be using your bowl for putting fruit into. If you have a microfiber cloth, I would recommend using that to add the wax onto it and rub it in nicely. I couldn't find mine. I ended up using a dishcloth and it wasn't a good idea because a lot of fluff came off it. So don't do what I do, do what I say. <laughs> I think I've said that a few times before. Anyway, as you can see, once the wax is on there, the colours really pop even more. And the finished result, I think, is quite eye-catching. I really do love it. it. I think it looks like real stone. Apart from, obviously, you wouldn't have those big silver lines in real stone. That just gives it a little bit of glamour. But, yeah, I do think it's got a really lovely stone effect. And I'm so happy with the results. Apart from that white spot in the middle. <laughs> So there we have it. We've come to the end of the video and I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't already subscribed and you would like to, please do that. And please give it the thumbs up as well. That will really help me. And I will see you again next week. Bye for now.